I swear to Christ Almighty, if my boss gets in my face one more time, I'm telling him where to go and how to get there and walking off the fucking site. Working me like a goddamn rickshaw driver every fucking day, pulling that wheelbarrow up and down, up and down, up and down, every fucking flight of the building. Now, the least I can do is enjoy this goddamn coconut cluster. Jesus, better than I remembered. What the fuck is this? Oh, <laughs> I love this one. Hello, everybody. I'm Quake Matthews. You're watching Myth Music Television, and this is the first ever episode of Cooking with Quake. And boy, am I excited today. I know what you're thinking. You see the apron, and you think that fish is the dish. Well, I'm no longer a pescatarian, so today we're going to be doing some carbs. Non bread, to be exact. Similar to the type of bread that I'm making in my rap career currently. Let's get into it. Now, whether you're making a song or you're making a dish, it's composed of a lot of different ingredients. And that's what we have here. So what you'll need to make this non bread is some sugar, some oil of your choice. I'm fancy, so I like rosemary. Um, you'll need some salt, preferred sea salt, but we have iodized today because we're feeling unhealthy. Pepper, flour, warm water, and nutritional yeast. Step one, in a small bowl, we are gonna put half a cup of warm water. We're gonna go in with, fuck, one tablespoon of sugar, teaspoon, teaspoon, one teaspoon. Don't put a tablespoon. All right, now we got uh, two teaspoons of dry active yeast. So what the sugar does is it acts almost like a, Viagra to the yeast. It, 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 it helps the yeast grow and become erect. Um, so it's a, it's a natural aphrodisiac for the yeast. Now you're going to want to mix this in until it's well dissolved. I'm not in my home kitchen. It's throwing me off. It's gotten off to a fucking terrible start. Now we're going to let that sit for a minute. Let it all get dissolved until it's frothy on top. So now, once it's nice and frothy, you're gonna wanna go in with your yogurt, your olive oil, and one egg. Now, it says plain yogurt, but I'm not a plain type of guy. So I'm using this garlic spread, this Lebanese garlic spread. In Lebanon, we call it tum. You might have had it at Meza, or Ray's, or one of them. This is the one I got from the grocery store, Maroons. I find it adds a little more kick, if you will, than the, uh, the plain yogurt. Now, I'm not going with your regular olive oil. I'm going with the rosemary olive oil. Cause like I said, I'm not plain. And I'm, I'm thinking outside the box. I'm trying to make it flavor, delectable. You know what I mean? I can't think of another adjective right now to describe delicious, but you get my drift. So now we're gonna go in with our egg. I've been watching a lot of Gordon Ramsay lately and I saw how he does it. He cracks it with one hand on the side of the bowl. So that's what we're gonna try to do right now. I've been doing this for years. You think I'm fucking playing? What we're gonna do here now is whisk in. We don't have a whisk, so we're gonna use a spoon. I'm getting that beautiful, beautiful fragrance from the rosemary. Maybe I'll use a fork. I was making this at home the other day and the oil from the pan jumped up, caught me with the third degree. I don't know if you want to get a close up on that. It's kind of healing up now though. But. I'll get a close up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like healed now. <laughs> so I went into another bowl with one cup of flour. I'm also going to go in with the salt and I'm going to mix thoroughly yet again. Now it said Half a teaspoon of salt. I went in with the full teaspoon. Uh, me personally, I like flavor. If you don't like flavor, just don't add it. Don't get salty with me. 
Now here is where it takes a little spin. We are gonna add the wet and the dry all into one big thing like a fucking university shindig. You know what I mean? So we're gonna get the wet, go in to the dry. That's what happens after the university shindig. Now that just smells fragrant and beautiful. That rosemary gives me a hint of like Christmas tree vibes and that garlic just reminds me of grandma's cooking. More flour to you. We're gonna go in with another little tidbit of flour here, maybe half a cup or so. And we're gonna keep stirring. This is a lesson for any of you artists out here. It takes a while to get your finished product looking good. It takes a lot of elbow grease, a lot of going in circles, and a lot of coming back to where you started until you finally get something to take shape as this dough is about to do. Sometimes you just gotta get hands on. If you want something done right, you do it yourself. So, you're gonna have a ball. You'll have a ball of dough, but I mean you'll have a ball doing it as well. So you want a uh, lightly floured surface, and then you're gonna wanna knead the dough until it's defloured. It's a hands-on experience. Did I already say that? <laughs> <laughs> now they call it knead because before they discovered on how to do it with their palms, they actually did it with their knees back in the 1800s. But then they realized it's really kind of hard to get it up there on the counter. So they said, why don't we just do it with our hands? But they kept the name knead. Now, I don't know if you need to do it quite that long, but me, I don't take any shortcuts. So once you've got this ball of dough and you've got all your flour in there and it's smooth but not sticky, you're going to want to send it back home to where it came from. You're going to go there, put it in the bowl, you're going to put it under the blankets and let the uh, yeast and the sugar do their thing until you have a new creature, I don't know, no, a new specimen, I don't know. All right, you're going to want to put it somewhere warm. Me personally, I like to put it in the window by the sun because, I don't know, something about it just helps everything along. So it's been about an hour, and as you can see, the salt and the yeast really got together and erected the dough for the naan bread. So we're gonna wanna lightly flour this cutting board here. Knead it a little more, and you're gonna wanna make a dough ball. Now you're gonna wanna cut it into about eight equal pieces. So, when you got your pieces all separated, lightly dust this in flour. You're going to want to heat a pan up for your naan. And you're going to want to make sure it's a non-stick pan. Because nobody likes a naan that sticks, so you got to get your non-stick pan. And everything will work out great. So, you're going to want to make it into a little ball here. Just like so, about the consistency of a snowball. And you're going to grab your bowling pin here. And just start... Bowling. You're going to want to make it into an oval type of shape. And uh, you don't want it too thick. You don't want it too thin either. So I'm making them an oval shape. Kind of like a beaver tail. You guys remember the beaver tails. And then go in. Go right in. There you go. And on each side, you're going to want to maybe cook it for about a minute a side. And you'll know when to flip it when you start to see it bubbling up. It doesn't get much better than this. So there you go. That's what the final product looks like. You can sprinkle some salt on the top or different seasonings. You can brush it with butter, which I like to do. You can eat it with hummus and combine two different cultures like my parents did to make me. 
You can do whatever you want. That's the beauty of culinary arts. There is no rules in Quake's kitchen. We get wild. There you have it. Easy, at home, non-bread. This was Cooking with Quake. I am Quake Matthews. Thank you for watching Myth Music TV. And now the part I've been waiting for. Look at that, how it just tears apart at the seams. Mmm, just like the old country. Mm -hmm.